so excited to share this quilt. This is just a great quilt. And I know I say that about all of them. I know, I know. But this one, oh, this grandmother's flower garden is probably my favorite. I know, I say it all the time, but this one actually lives on my spare bedroom bed. So that says something, right? I purchased this quilt at an auction. Well, wait a minute, before we get too far in, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me. I do a lessons from an old quilt series. I have a whole bunch, I think close to 70 of these videos now because I like to share my extensive collection of old quilts with everyone. And I also give you lessons, things that we can learn from the makers of these quilts as modern makers. All right, let's dig in this quilt. Okay, it measures 87 by 100, so it's huge. It was made, at least the center, which we'll talk about more when we take a closer look, was made, I think, in the 1930s or 1940s. It's scrappy, but it's a controlled scrappy. It has this wonderful effect and it has so many surprises that I wanna share with you. I purchased this at an auction. Now, I paid a little bit for this quilt, a little bit more than I normally do. I paid $150. I can justify it because it's the bedspread for my spare bedroom bed, right? And it saved me money by not going out and buying a new bedspread. At least that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's incredible, it's fun, it's wonder, I, I just love it. It is made by the same maker as the Hawaiian quilt that I reviewed last time. And then I also have a few other quilts that are coming up that are made also by that same maker. So let's dig in and take a closer look at this incredible beauty. First, let's just talk about a grandma's flower garden. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. All right, so a grandmother's flower garden consists of flowers and usually a path, which you can see here, that runs through. So it looks like a garden. It's made up of hexagons. Typically, not always, but typically the hexagons are done through a method called English paper piecing. I think that's what happened here, but I'm not positive. And I happen to have some paper piecing blocks, English paper piecing blocks that is, that I made. They're not in great condition because <laughs> I'm still learning, but you can see here, you build it on a paper. The fabric is wrapped around a piece of cardstock, at least in this case, and then sewn together with a whip stitch by hand. This is the way it's typically made. Back in the 1930s, 1940s, when this was really popular, they would use newspaper or just scraps of paper and reuse the papers as well. There aren't any papers that I can feel in this. Sometimes you can find old quilts that still have the papers. This isn't one of them. I think that's the way it was made just because of it's peeking inside. I can kind of see those little itty bitty whip stitches where it was put together. Each of the flowers are made up of 19 hexagons. And you can see even though it's scrappy, it's a controlled scrappy, meaning that the maker used the same fabrics around the outsides. So the, the center is the same on all of the flowers, giving it a nice consistency. And then the first row of hexagons is one fabric, and then the next row is another fabric. Again, still scrappy. It is consistent, however, with the three colors or three prints throughout this entire quilt. So we're not seeing anything mixed in. The maker took a lot of time to make sure that he or she had all of fabrics needed for each block. I love that. There are 77 of these blocks that make up this entire quilt. And if you're counting just the fabrics in the blocks, not the path, that means there are 1,493 pieces of fabric. And I didn't go ahead and count the path, I should, but I haven't yet. There's a lot of pieces in this quilt and it's all hand done, all hand quilted. All of the prints are these wonderful, bright 1930s prints that you often see reproduced now <laughs> because they are so wonderful. It's a bright, cheery quilt. Just makes you happy to look at it and then to run your hand over it because of all of this beautiful hand quilting. Each of the little hexagons are quilted inside of the hexagon and we'll see that on the back too. You'll see all the hexagons together. This quilt holds a secret and I'm gonna show you what that is right now. Here's the secret to this quilt. We'll pull this down so you can see. It's not straight. These blocks are not straight, they're crooked. I was baffled by this at first because I couldn't quite figure out what happened. And honestly, I still don't know what happened, but something did. I know as a maker, I would have been tempted to make it straight and I would have probably cut things off and turned it and twisted and everything else, but this maker didn't, which is fascinating. <laughs> also, I think that the border or this piece was appliqued to the gingham, which who doesn't love a gingham? Look at that. At a later date, just because get the idea that this was newer than this. 
and we saw the ginghams become really popular in the 1970s. So I kind of think this was added later, but who knows? Again, we see more hand quilting and the binding, interestingly enough, is the same as the backing and some of the hexagons because some of the hexagons are newer fabrics and you can kind of feel it. It's definitely a different fabric that were added to this quilt to probably make it big enough or the desired size or to make it so it could be applicated onto this background. And this I think is something that people don't think about. Let me move this over a little bit more, get to a corner is how to finish these quilts because it is tricky. What do you do when you have all of these pieces? Do you cut them off? Do you applique them down? Do you finish the edge so it's jagged? I think it's a real dilemma that we have as makers. And this is a great example of what you can do with it, even if it is a little, little skewed off to the side. The quilting is great also in the borders, like I said, and let's turn it around and see the backing. This backing is so nice. It's just a solid piece of fabric, but that quilting gives it such a wonderful texture that you just, you can't help but run your hands over it. It's so beautiful, the stitches, that hand quilting is meticulous, it's consistent and just gorgeous. And then if we look at the hand quilting on the borders that are coming through, you can see that here too. Again, so beautiful. The binding is the same as the backing and it also is the same as the added pieces. Let me turn it back around. Here, you can see that really good here. You can see the pieces that were added and this appears to be the exact same fabric that was used. Quickly, we're gonna look at some of the fabrics because they're incredible and then we'll get on to the lessons. All right, this one is probably my favorite block. This is the red with the purple. Oh, I love that. Look at those flowers. Oh, so gorgeous. Let's see another one. This green one is nice. And I like how the daisy, I think that's what this is, is centered sort of, but not completely. I don't think it was done on purpose. I think it was a happy accident, but I love that. And one more. Oh, we have this beautiful dark navy oh, with the pink. How beautiful is that? All right, let's move on to the lessons, but oh, I just could sit and look at these fabrics all day and have. <laughs> Didn't I tell you it was incredible? All right, so let's talk about the lessons we can learn from this incredible quilt. The first thing is straight is overrated. Yes, I said it. Here the maker took this quilt, probably had the issue of what do I do here because things are a little monkey and just decided to go with it. I think that that's something we all could learn from this maker. It's a gorgeous quilt. I absolutely love it. I didn't realize it wasn't straight. Of course, now I can't unsee it not being straight. So sorry about that because I probably did the same thing to you. And sometimes we just, get hung up on things that aren't important. And sometimes that's the stuff that makes these things special, like this quote. The next lesson we can learn is about that gingham. Okay, I'm gonna say another thing that maybe people will disagree with, but I feel like if you add gingham to anything, it's gonna go. Who's with me? <laughs> I just think it adds whimsy and fun. It's just, it's a great way to bring out a personality in a quilt. It adds some whimsy without too much whimsy, if you know what I mean. And that yellow gingham does that for this quilt. The next lesson is the consistency of the yellow centers. This is a scrappy quilt. As we know, tons and tons of scraps were used, right? But using something that anchors those flowers, that's consistent with those flowers, is ingenious. Uh, this is a great way to bring the cohesiveness to the quilt, along with the path. So one could argue that the path also gives that anchor and the cohesion that it needs, but I also think that center, that middle fabric just does it and allows each flower in this flower garden to look like it's from the same garden. I hope you enjoyed this one. This one was a good one. If you're interested in seeing more lessons from an old quilt, I will put a playlist here on the screen now so you can check them out. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.